It's practically been a year since I made a Skate 3 glitch video. In the past, I've just covered mods, limitations, quality of life features, and the soundtrack. Ooh, you suck. But now I'm trying to make up for everything that I haven't mentioned beforehand. It's been a while, and there's a few glitches that we've discovered and or revived, and I'd like to show you them. But before we get started, I have an announcement to make. Do you remember when I made a nearly two hour long video about speedrunning Skate 3? Well, I'm doing it again, but on Skate 2. I know my record was broken by two seconds, I'm not going back for it. I'm here to set a new record, not on any percent, but on career 100%, which is not 100%, there's a difference, I promise. So starting on June 1st, all the way to the last day of June, I will be speedrunning Skate 2 on my second channel. So if you want to see me do it live, come to my second channel and watch me just hate myself for a whole month. But I would also like to extend this invitation to you guys to help speedrun this game with me. You can come and join the Discord and people can teach you how to speedrun this game. You can put times on this leaderboard for me to beat in the future. If you continue to run this game, you might be a recurring character when I make another two hour long video recapping my 30 day experience. So join the Discord to help you get started where there is already a live split for you to download. I know Skate 2 isn't on the marketplace anymore, but hey, if you can get a copy of it, you'll make my next video much more interesting. TLDR, be running Skate 2, come join me, it'll be great. We also have um, $5 from Cifras, who says, amazing to see Skate 2 on the big stage. Have a great run, Supa. Thank you. That's not how you pronounce it. Now on to the Skate 3 glitches, where the first thing I'm gonna talk about really isn't a glitch, but something you should be cautious about. When wanting to apply a necklace on your skater, it only works if you have a shirt on your skater. If you choose jackets, hoodies, other stuff, the necklace won't appear. With an exception of these two cardigans for some reason. Now onto the real glitches. I guess it's more map inaccuracies. If you come to this corner by Crystal Towers, you'll notice a floating light and you can interact with it. Next, if you mosey your way down to over here, you will see that there's a waterfall. And in this game, you can't swim. So what are we gonna do with this waterfall? We're not gonna swim. We're gonna go fall right through it. Yeah, so if you fall right between the waterfall, you can be under the water. There are cases of people being in the water in offline. I know I've talked about it being in online, but there is an offline way, but I don't know a consistent method on how to do that. Sorry. And now for the last map glitch, objects will start falling from the sky. Not like that though. Well, not from a sky, but under a bridge. On top of this bridge are some barriers. They are gonna stay there. But if you happen to wait long enough, more barriers will spawn from under the bridge and fall down. I'm not gonna wait here long enough to show you guys. Trust me on this one. Now for the last map glitch, which is just a huge oversight by the developers. When doing the TSM photo cover, they want you to air over these cars. However, these cars aren't actually the cars that are driving around. They are there specifically for the mission. Meaning that when traffic does come by, it will go through the cars. Now for something more flashy that will bring out the Michael Jackson in all of us. If you get enough speed, you can ollie then get off your board and you'll be running really fast. With this, you can actually slowly turn around and notice that your character will start moon running. It's a pretty flashy thing to show off to your friends who haven't seen it before. If you turn around too quickly, it doesn't work. If you come to a quarter pipe, get into a blunt stall and then get into a dark catch. You would notice your board is caught on the lip of the quarter pipe, preventing you from falling down. Another dark catch grind glitch would be opening up the audit dropper, placing this fancy rail, turning it on its side, and then dark catch on it. There's a good chance that you could lock yourself in position to where you just won't fall. This next glitch is more something you can only do in a skate park, or it's a specific setup. By getting a down rail and then colliding it with a slanted wall, doing a grind will cause the grind to continue on the slanted wall until you reach the ground. In my video about increasing style, I briefly went over about doing tricks out of a pole jam. Well, that was a bad explanation, but I could go over something with more detail that I already mentioned. By grinding into a pole jam and flicking a trick right where the rail meets the ground, you will low pop any trick of choice. However, if you let it ride out just long enough, the animation for any flip trick will be wonky. Can you guess what flip trick this is? If any of you guys guessed tray flip, then you'd be correct. Now referencing my popping video, I talked about curb boosting, which I said 
can only be done in normal. I am wrong. It can be done in any difficulty, including easy. So if you were to do a trick next to a ledge curb or whatever, and at the right moment, you have the possibility to bounce off that curb, provided with the correct flip trick and body rotation. But what you didn't know, during when you pop off the ledge, if you happen to get off your board, you will actually get more air. The downside to this trick is that you can't do anything when you're suspended in air. You just have to wait until you touch the ground. Now for more silly stuff, like getting your hand stuck in a trash can. This also works with a chair. Yeah, that's about it. All right, for those of you who remember, I talked about a snowboard glitch that can really only be done at this bridge at campus, there is another method, and it's much easier to do. The downside is, you have to use this container. Well, why is that a downside? If you remember, if the object doesn't spawn naturally in the world, then it doesn't spawn at all in your object dropper. The containers spawn naturally in industrial, but they don't do in downtown and or university. But the DLCs have no issue, please use them in DLCs. By placing a marker, step away from where you place that marker, open up object dropper, select the container, put it on its side, exit object dropper, now go back to your marker. You are now in the container. And what you have to do is just drop your skateboard. For some reason, the skateboard will just sink into the ground, only showing the deck. So from there on, you can just jump on your snowboard. Really easy. Another glitch using the object dropper. Well, not much of a glitch, but more of an exploit. This long pole naturally spawns right side up. So if it happens to lay on its side, you go up to it and upright it, it will violently stand up. So abusing this upright motion, you can place a marker where you have one foot on the pole and then set it to your marker. Now for the final step is just to upright it. When you upright it, you just simply get on your board. The pole's momentum will carry you along with it, allowing you to go to the sky. Another object glitch that will get you vertical height is this billboard. By placing this billboard upside down, you can somehow squeeze yourself in between the billboard and the rail, just by simply doing a double grab. This is my best attempt at doing this glitch, and then here's how the glitch should look like. <laughs> Another glitch you can do with the billboard is sketching it. And while you're grabbing onto it, you turn it into the billboard, giving you lots of speed. This same glitch happens to also work with a soccer net. So go wild. Okay, so you remember this dropping in on a pallet glitch? Well, to have this glitch to work, you had to drop in into a wall. But what if in some weird scenario where there are no walls, which is highly unlikely, and you want to do this glitch? Well, there is a way. By placing down the pallet and having one foot placed on that pallet, you have to make sure that that foot lines up with the same arm that is holding your board. Place a marker and then go back to it. What you're looking for is a noise of your skateboard shaking. That's when you know the glitch is working. A visual cue would to be spinning around and notice that your board is not really inside your hand, but barely grabbing on. Now that you're in this loose handboard grab state, you can simply drop in. Now for these next two glitches, we're going back to the skate park, where it abuses the reset props option that's not available in other places. Objects have gravity, unlike the skate parks that are just suspended in midair. So when you hit the reset prop option, it will go back to the exact height that you placed it at. So by abusing this mechanic, by getting plywood and placing it just above the ground, you can manual on top of it and reset the props. Doing so, your board will get caught in the plywood. By doing this, you have made your own locomotive, where you can kick the skateboard, which moves along with the plywood, making you go places. And with this same setup, you can reset the props as you're running toward the plywood itself. Resetting at a specific time when you come across the plywood, the plywood should jolt you upwards, making you look like you're running in the sky. Continuing with prop glitches, by getting a thread bench and as it falls down you run towards it, it will give you a speed boost. It is hard to time and hard to set up, but it works. We found another speed glitch, and it involves this trash can lid. You preferably want the lid upside down and on top of your board. To make it stay on top of your board, it has to be somewhat moving. If not, it falls right through. When you do get the lid to stay on top of your board, you jump onto it and then you start a manual. And somehow, through the broken physics of Skate 3, you have now achieved a speed glitch. Oh. 
Don't go out of bounds. Oh, shit. Oh. I'm controlling it. Oh, my God. I can control it. Oh, you power oh. oh my gosh. Oh. A cool thing to note is that if you do have the lid right side up and on top of your skateboard, your wheel is caught in the trash can lid and you can do this ollie elevator thing that I've talked about in the past. Now for a visual glitch. I talked about kill it vision in the past where you reset a challenge right before you kill it, keeping you in this permanent kill it vision state, but there's another vision that you can have. Taser vision. By aggravating one of the women NPCs in the world, they will pull out a taser and tase you. Once tased, you realize the world is a negative color. If you were to press pause and go to edit skater, you would see that the edit skater location is also in negative color. However, that's the only place that it works. So if you went into free skate, you'd still go into this edit skater location and see the effect, but nowhere else works. Going into trick guide doesn't work, but you will still hear the audio effect of the taser going nonstop. Hippie jumps. That is a mechanic and a mechanic that we can't abuse. By doing a low hippie jump and quarter spinning backside just a bit, you get off your board before you hit the ground and then you jump. Doing so will launch you into the air. You will have different outcomes depending on what posture you are in. For me, since I was doing it in straight, I got launched a lot higher than usual, but I couldn't get back onto my board. If you did it in default, you would have more success. There is a very small window to jump, so don't get frustrated if you can't do it. Referring back to my popping video again, I went over Crail Pops and Seatbelt Pops. Hold a seatbelt and do a hard flip. Hold a Crail and do a Nolly hard flip. You'll get more air than a traditional pop. But what if I tell you, you can get a lot more air with these pops. Specifically with the seatbelt pop. If you come across the curb and do the seatbelt pop on it, but not doing a hard flip, but a kick flip or a heel flip, you would get significantly more air. But this is a very finicky glitch or it doesn't work everywhere you want. You have to do it on a curb, but you have to be facing in a westward direction. If you're facing any other direction, this glitch does not work. And it's also dependent on what posture you're in. Here's me doing it on straight, perfectly fine. Here's me doing it in default. Oh! <laughs> no, I went on. Oh, oh, oh shit! What the fuck happened? <laughs> I went underground! Also, here's me getting the timing wrong for this glitch. I didn't even know that could happen. But in some rare cases, you might get a bounce that looks like you are modding. Water, the enemy of all skaters, can't do anything. When you fall in water, there's most likely a splash animation. But what if I told you you can delay that splash animation or displace it? If you somehow get your foot to touch the water without falling in, you'll be in a bailed state, but most of your hollow me controls will just be disabled, meaning you won't be able to hop around like usual. How splash animations work in this game is that the game takes note when you touch the water, and it also takes note at what height the y-axis that water is at. So once you go below the y-axis of the water, then the water splash animation appears at your skater's location. But because we didn't fall directly into the water in the beginning, there will still be a splash animation because your feet dipped in, but you're out of the water again, yet you're still in a hull of meat water bale state. So if you dip below the y-axis of the water again, another splash animation should appear. So as a party trick, you can just speed glitch, touch the water, roll, and then have the splash animation appear once you're below the water. The easiest example to show this off is at Chan Center. Simply just all into this corner and fall over the edge. You can now show off your friends a David Blaine magic trick. When in free skate, you can disable your HUD, making it have a clean slate and it's just you and the world plus skating. No trick list, no multipliers, and no compass. Well, if I told you you can do this in career mode as well, except you really don't want to do this in career mode. To have no HUD at all, you have to have party play. When in party play, you can restart the game by hitting that option. When you restart, you want to hit the replay editor button. Doing so, your skater will disappear and you'll just be staring at the world for quite some time. And what's actually happening is that it's playing the beginning cutscenes of the party play mission. And when it's done, you'll have control of your character again but you'll have no HUD. The only way to fix this is by completing the game of party play. You cannot press start, you cannot press select when this is happening. You are stuck until it's over. You'll get your HUD back if you play another game. But let's say you didn't restart the game, but just quit out after the game ended. You are now back into the career world where you have no HUD, no trick list, no multiplier, and no compass. Cool, but you still can't press start and you still can't interact with anything in the world. 
you are essentially in adventure mode in Minecraft. AI and objects are really fun to mess with. Whenever you're in a mission and you have an AI skater with you, you can actually mess with them by placing objects. You can't place them during the mission, so you do it beforehand. So if I place a dumpster right here, then activate the Danny Way challenge, Danny Way all of a sudden is trapped in my dumpster. You can get weird results like Rob Deerdick flying into the sky. <laughs> he got launched by the fucking. <laughs> He got- I restarted the challenge and he got launched! <laughs> oh my... <laughs> Another AI object glitch is doing it during a death race. If you were to place an object on the starting point of where the death race should start, the beginning cutscene ends up changing. At least it should, but objects despawn at the starting area of a death race. That's why you have to place them away from the starting area. So during the race, you drag them in place. Then, if you restart, magic happens. This glitch does not work on the beginning cutscenes of a team death race. Just so you know. Now, I have two more glitches to talk about. These two glitches really break the game and push the limits of what's possible in this spaghetti code game we call Skate 3. You ever noticed how lonely it is your skate park can be just by yourself? Well, fear not, you can actually get an AI skater within your park. The call skater ability is disabled when you're inside of a park. So that's why you go to the other world to bring them into your park. AI skaters exist on a global coordinate map, meaning that when you move to a new location, AI skaters will be along with you, if you line up the coordinates correctly. Skate parks exist in their own little world, meaning there's no reason to build a skate park out in like negative a thousand area, meaning that every skate park exists at zero zero. That's what I'm calling it, because I don't really have coordinates to justify where this actually is placed. So if you go to the 0, zero coordinates of a map, and you see an AI skater, you can then move to the other skate park, bringing these AI skaters with you. The problem is that these AI skaters don't have pathing, so they're just gonna stay there and do nothing. They will exist in the park as long as you're there, just that if you happen to punch them and they fall down, they will disappear and never show up again. These AI skaters do show up in replay, but if they disappear, they're no longer in the replay. So be aware. I'm not gonna be this guy to tell you that this glitch exists and not tell you how to get every AI skater to every park. So take notes. Every skate park, besides Backlot, lines up perfectly with Maloof NYC. You go to Maloof NYC and you see a skater around this area. You then move to any one of the parks and they'll be there. There are a couple maps that are a bit different, and that's the Stadium, Downtown, and Zen Plaza. They have to be around this area for it to work, but you'll capture them, don't worry. Now to get AI skaters in the Backlot Studio, which is a DLC, you have to hang around the Rosalita area. But remember, it's a global coordinate, meaning it also includes the Y coordinate. So when you move to the Backlot, they'll fall from the sky and instantly die. Well, let's say you don't have any DLC. There's only a couple parks this actually works at. Stadium, Zen Plaza, and Downtown. And to capture the AI, they have to be on this strip along the Industrial District. That will bring them to Zen Plaza. To get them into Downtown, you have to be by the old factory area. And to get them into the Stadium, you have to be around the Ninth Dimension area. But be warned, they also fall from the sky. I also had this happen to me when the white coordinate was just a little too low. I have no idea how this happens. A cool little side effect is that this also works with Skate School. When call skaters, no one shows up. There is no AI pathing. So you just steal them from Aloof NYC and you can make them hit the jump. There he is. Welcome. There he yeah. goes. He's going, he's going to jump it. He jumped it. <laughs> he made the gap. <laughs> he made the gap. <laughs> now for the last glitch of this video. Instead of moving AI skaters, we are moving challenges. Just like the positions of AI skaters, all challenges exist on a global coordinate. So, if you line up each district, you can see where each challenge will lay across in a different district. Using rock blocks, for example, I go up to rock blocks. I don't activate the challenge. I open the start menu and change location to university. While it's loading, I then hit the home button. 
Now it looks different because I'm on emulator, but just hit that Xbox or PlayStation button on your controller, depending on what console you're on. Once it's done loading, you then exit out of that home menu. There will be a prompt saying, hey, you want to start the challenge? And you hit yes. And now it is perfectly lined up with Hartley Stadium. This can also be done in downtown. If you do the exact same thing, go to Roblox, open the menu, go to downtown, hit the home button, back out the home button once it's done, start challenge. You're now doing rock blocks right by park and play. Hey, remember a few moments ago when we grabbed this AI skater and put him in skate school? Well, Maloof Edge lines up perfectly with skate school. And just like capturing AI skaters, these challenges exist on every coordinate possible. So sometimes, or most of the time, they'll be under the map or could be way out of bounds or up in the sky. How the hell do I reach that? There are also some cases where it will place you out of bounds and you just can't do anything. Hey, remember that floating basketball court that's way outside of art gallery? You're gonna have to like scale a building and then launch yourself and then kind of navigate yourself through the void to see if you can even land in the basketball court. Well, there's an easy way around this. Go to the kink, move to art gallery, hit the home button, activate the challenge. You are falling pretty close to that basketball court. This is the easiest way to get here and it's useful for people who don't know how to do the backwards man. This glitch is only possible if there's a prompt that allows you to start the challenge with a button. Own the spots are a great example of this. However, this does work with other career challenges. The problem is, if you complete it, that NPC or the prompt that just exists in space to tell you to start this challenge will not appear there if it is complete. So this glitch is really cool on a fresh save file giving you every challenge in the game because you haven't completed it yet. Something worthy to note is that not only does it have all the mission aspects to it when you move locations, it also includes AI skaters pathing. So if you were to do a follow challenge, the follow challenge might not work so well because they'll just be clipping into the ground. Or remember skate school, there is no AI pathing. However, these skaters are moving around as if there is one because it's using the AI pathing from the other map. This, unfortunately, does not work if you teleport to a skate park. I've tried. Side effects may include when the cutscenes happen and they don't care about the location they're in, or when you start a death race that's a team death race, the beginning cinematic will be upside down. And if you're doing a one-up and the AI falls into the black abyss, it's not programmed to instantly die, so it'll pop right back up. Pop out. <gasps> oh my... Oh! No! Oh. Benny was about to make the biggest... He was about to do a thread the needle. Another thing is when you start a death race and it's not on solid ground, you'll fall into the void, but for some reason the NPCs could skate on air. Why can't I do that? And that is every glitch that I've missed in the past. So, as a reminder, I'm speedrunning Skate 2. Please join the Discord, please make runs, and I'll see you on my second channel. Thanks for watching.